This is the Wiley Coyote here at the airport with a quick tip. Um, I am working on making a calibrated fuel dipstick for um, finding out how much fuel exactly I have in each wing tank. Um, each wing holds 18 gallons in a, a wing tank on either side. And so I have a, a, a cutoff paint stir stick here that's the right length. Um, I happen to know that about here is full, but I don't have any marks on it, so I want to calibrate this so before takeoff, um, I can know exactly how much fuel I have in each tank. Um, so I need to drain the fuel out of this tank and then add a, a couple gallons at a time and add a line um, each time to that stick um, to calibrate it. So here's a way I came up with for draining the fuel out of just one tank using the uh, quick drain for when you sump the tanks. Um, so I'll show you what I've got going on here. Um, just two, two pieces of plywood and a, a hydraulic bottle jack. Um, this cord I've wrapped around at the basically the same height as the jack um, so that I have two parallel pieces of plywood there. This end, let's see if I can get in here, this end of the uh, plywood I notched in and just put together these plumbing fittings um, to adapt, you know, a hose barb up to a, um, I believe it's a quarter inch, um, ended up quarter inch, you know, threaded there. Basically just getting it so it's the right diameter to fit this quick drain. Um, so I just seat it right there, have everything set up um, at the right height. The hose, the hose goes down into this um, jerry can, and of course it's important to maintain good grounding so you don't have a, any static electricity that could spark to, you know, ground to your airframe. So I've got this grounded to a, a, good, um, a good connection in there. So, so my airframe and the jerry can are the same potential. Um, so I'll get this on a tripod and show you how it works. I've already drained some of the fuel, so there's only a few gallons left. But you get it set up like this and then hold the uh, fitting so it's right, um, just right around the bottom of that fuel sump. And then slowly, carefully raise the jack up, making sure to, to hold the fitting so it doesn't slide off the fuel sump sideways, allowing any fuel to, to leak out beside it. Uh, be careful not to jack, raise the jack too, hard, too far or it'll, um, you know, you'll be putting undue pressure on the underside of your fuel tank. Excuse the train going by, I'm right, the airport is pretty close to the railroad tracks. Alright. So now as you can see, the fuel flow isn't isn't terribly fast, but if you've got some time, this is a way to make it work. I don't have to take any fittings apart. I didn't have to take the, the uh, gas collator, the fuel strainer at the firewall. I didn't have to open that up or anything. Um, this is just an easy, clean way to do it. Um, and then I just let it sit while I work on other things, keeping an eye on it really close so you don't overflow this can or nothing slips out of place and you end up um, spilling fuel all over the place. Um, so we'll let this drain away and then I'll, I'll uh, get with you when I'm further along. Alright, I am back. It's actually been a couple months since I filmed the section of the video you just saw. And unfortunately I sold the aircraft before I finished filming the making of the dipstick for the fuel tanks. But I did finish it and it worked well. So what I'm going to do now is explain the rest of the process I went through to make it. What I did was just taxi over to the fuel pumps off of the right-hand tank. So I, with the fuel selector valve, I selected the right-hand tank to run the engine off of, since the left tank was completely empty. So I got there and um, put one gallon in at a time. I used the meter that was on the fuel pump to tell me how much fuel I was putting in. When the meter read 1.0 gallons, I stopped. I pulled the uh, the filler 
out and dipped my dipstick into the tank and it read nothing. So I put in one more gallon, pulled the filler out, put the dipstick in, and it read nothing. So I kept doing that. Um, as you can see on this picture of the completed dipstick, I didn't register anything until roughly four and a half gallons. This was to be expected because the attitude of the plane sitting in tailwheel configuration is such that the first fuel to go into the tank collects in the rear of the tank and then slowly builds up until you finally have fuel on the bottom of the tank directly under the filler cap, which is about right here. So I went ahead and put five gallons in, then I made my first mark um, where the top of the fuel reached on the dipstick. And then I started putting two gallons in at a time. So as you can see, five, seven, nine, etc. Two gallons at a time, all the way until it was full. And then I took, I taxied back to the hangar and took this picture of the dipstick next to a ruler. So in case I lost the dipstick, um, I wouldn't have to go through the whole procedure again to make a new one. I could just look at this picture and my uh, measurements here and make a new dipstick. After I took this picture, I wrote the end number of the aircraft and that it was it was measured in US gallons. And then I also noted that it was in three point attitude only on level ground with the 806 tires that were on it. Um, so that I would know what configuration it was in, that it was just on flat level ground in a three-point normal attitude sitting on the ground. If I had, had put huge bush wheels on this or skis or floats, um, obviously the attitude of the aircraft would change, so the markings of the dipstick wouldn't be valid anymore. So that's really important to note that you make those um, those mark those uh indications on your dipstick so you know what attitude the plane was set up for when you made it. I need to add a quick disclaimer here. I've shown you how my dipstick turned out, but you alone are responsible for knowing how much fuel is in your aircraft at all times. Please do not copy my or anyone else's dipstick. Either make one yourself or purchase one that has been made specifically for your aircraft. And then test it out. Add a few, a few gallons of fuel to your aircraft at a time and check with the dipstick to make sure it's accurate. Well that's all I have for now. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comment section below. For more instructional videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and fly safe.